Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Mountain East Conference matchup between the Notre Dame Fighting Lady Falcons and your West Liberty University Lady Hilltoppers. Filling in for Todd Allen, who's under the weather, I'm Kyle Patrick. This broadcast is brought to you by Belmont Savings Bank, A&B Kia, Country Club Rehabilitation Campus, The Store, Undo's, and Main Street Bank. The Lady Hilltoppers coming off of a tough loss at Glenville State on Saturday, on Saturday 112 to 99. To push them back a little bit in the Mountain East Conference standings, and we'll take a look at those Mountain East Conference standings right now. Glenville State, of course, clinching the outright conference championship on Saturday with that win over the Lady Toppers. Charleston coming in at second. Uh, Char Concord right behind them, both of those teams with identical records. West Liberty sitting at the four spot, currently at 15 and five in the conference, followed by these Notre Dame Lady Falcons at 11 and nine in the conference. UVA wise, Fairmont State, Shepherd, Wesleyan, West Virginia State, Urbana, and Wheeling Jesuit rounding out the standings for the Mountain East Conference as we take a look at tonight's matchup between these two teams. Notre Dame coming in with an overall record of 14 and 12, 11 and nine in the conference, scoring about 71.6 per. 0.6 points per game, giving up around 71.9, rebounding about about 40 a game and about 15.3 assists per game. And for your West Liberty Lady Toppers, overall record of 18 and 8, 15 and 5 in the conference, scoring 84 and a half points per game, get, giving up around 77 a game, rebounding 38.9 per game and averaging 20 and a half assists per game as well. As we take a look at some players to watch for the Falcons first, Sedena, Sena Adachi, excuse me, 17.2 points per game. She had a massive game the last time these two teams met. She was the big reason why Notre Dame was victorious over West Liberty down there in Notre Dame. Also shooting well over 80% from the free throw line. And then, of course, Kylie Ramlo, Ramlo coming off a big week last week, averaging 11.5 points per game. 2.8 rebounds a game as well. And for your West Liberty University Hilltoppers, Marissa Brown shooting over 60% from the floor, averaging 24 points per game, 12 and a half rebounds per game as well. And Taylor Johnson, number 22, averaging 16.6 per game, uh, also shooting uh, just under 50% from the field on the season. Well, when we come back, we'll have starters and tip-off right here on the West Liberty Sports Network. Hey, I'm Dalton Matter, and I'm from Wheeling, West Virginia, and I'm a visual communications design major at West Liberty University. Today, I'm here to give you an inside look at this program. Let's go check out my graphic design history class. Right now, we're going to hang our Victorian app project for a critique. So we're looking at what makes it a Victorian ad for one, and then two, what makes it work uh, as a composition and with the typography and the concept. Really enjoy this one right here. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the aesthetic about it, um, the black and gray and white. At this time, probably chromolithography wasn't being used, mm -hmm. um, and so they preferred the black, white, gray over something that uses chromolithography, which is color printing. In my Design 2 class, we're using cardboard to construct three-dimensional tiny homes. For me, I think my favorite part of this major is the different uh, variety of classes offered here at West Liberty. We're first instructed with a lot of foundation principles, and it gives us the ability to take those principles and apply them to projects in the future. This program uh, really offers a hands-on approach to learning. My design classes, we get to work on three-dimensional uh, objects like with cardboard and wire, and I think that's a really uh, great experience to expand an artist's ability to uh, work with different media. I 
sometimes it's nice just to hang out at the union and work on homework. And it's a good time to catch up with friends. <laughs> I hope this gave you an inside look at the visual communication design major here at West Liberty University. Check us out online to find out more about this program. In life, there's a time for everything. If you're looking for an education, the time is now and the place is West Liberty University, where a quality education and career-based learning awaits you. The metro rate and $5 million in scholarships makes a quality education possible. We're living on campus, joining clubs, cheering for the Hilltoppers, and enjoying our beautiful campus give you the total college experience. It's all here at West Liberty University. Caring, quality, affordable, total college experience. Get connected with West Liberty University by following us on social media. Look up Discover West Lib on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Stay connected with campus events, news, and information on your favorite social media platforms with videos and photos from around campus. Don't miss any of the Hilltop happenings. Get connected with West Liberty University today. Caring, quality, affordable. The total college experience. Yost. I'm a zoo sci major here at West Liberty. I've always loved animals and I knew for a long time that I wanted to work with them. I didn't really know in what setting. I learned about West Liberty University Zoo Science Program. I thought that would be awesome to get involved in so I came here and I've loved it. In addition to our classes we also have animals here on campus where we can get involved and learn how to take care of them with hands-on experience. Now reaching over 100,000 homes, WLU-TV 14, the Ohio Valley's educational access station. Welcome back to the West Liberty Sports Network. Uh, starters right now going on though, presenting Brandy Beater, her 1,000 point ball. But uh, right now we're gonna get to some starters here. First off for Notre Dame, number five, Sena Adachi. Mentioned her, she was one of the players to watch for these Notre Dame Falcons, averaging over 17 points per game. Number 20, Jesse Stout. Also number 23, Judy Lorezny. Number 24, Kylie Ramlo, another player to watch for these Falcons. And Katie Karolik rounding out the starting five for Notre Dame. Now for your West Liberty University Lady Hilltoppers. Number five, Audrey Tingle, the sophomore out of West Lafayette, Ohio. Number 15, Marissa Brown, the 6'3 senior from Columbus, Ohio. Number 21, Brandy Beater from Hemorrhage, Pennsylvania, the, another senior in this starting lineup. Number 22, Taylor Johnson, the junior from Pickerton, Ohio. And number 32, Johnny Okoski, the third senior in the starting lineup out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now the head coach for the Notre Dame Falcons. There she is, Lauren Maser, her second season here at Notre Dame, 37 and 21. And uh, so I got her team in a good position for the Mountain East Conference Tournament. They'll be there next week. And for your West Liberty University Hilltoppers, head coach Kyle Cooper got his Lady Hilltoppers rolling and won uh, nine out of their last 10. And you can see there, 31 and 24 in just his two seasons here on the hilltop as well but joined now by ej shodzinski and ej but before the game started today the regional rankings came out again uh, for both women and men but the women if the if the ncaa tournament started today the west liberty uh, university lady hilltoppers would be just out uh, ranked number nine now in the region after falling to iup and or excuse me glenville state uh, the regional rankings now list, number one, Virginia Union, number two, Cal, number three, Glenville State, who the Lady Hilltoppers just fell to on Saturday, number four, IUP, after they lost to Cal PA, number five, Bowie State, Bowie State, excuse me, number six, Edinburgh, number seven, Charleston, and number eight, Concord. So we'll be keeping an eye 
on some key games around the region tonight. Edinburgh is actually hosting IUP tonight. So two regional uh, opponents going at it tonight, two ranked regional opponents. And Charleston and Concord both have tough Mountain East Conference matchups as well. Charleston's at Wise and West Virginia State's at Concord. But EJ, even though the season's winding down, still a lot of time for the Lady Hilltoppers to make some noise and get back into the top eight. Yeah, it's pretty clear to me. All the Lady Hilltoppers have to do is win. Right. And, uh, you know, they'll have a tough test tonight, another one on Saturday at Wheeling Jesuit. And then I think it's pretty clear they need to finish ahead of Charleston and Concord in the tournament to really give themselves a yeah. great chance to get into the regional play. Making the uh, conference championship certainly would not hurt their cause. That's for sure. And again, that Mountain East Conference tournament just a week away from the day. It kicks off down in Wheeling as Marissa Brown wins a tip back to Audrey Tingle. And we are underway from the ASRC between uh, four and five in the Mountain East Conference, a possible first round matchup next week. Taylor Johnson hits the three to get the party started here for the Lady Hillsoppers in their final game at home this season. I like the way they came out. Very crisp in their first possession. Ball movement, open shot, knock it down. There's a bucket there, Notre Dame answering right back. Stout gets that one. As Johnson now driving, thought about the step back. Move it, move it. Down to 15 seconds on the shot clock here for the Lady Toppers. Johnson driving, kicks it back to Johnny over to Brandy for three. And it goes. Brandy Beater connects Lady Hilltoppers. Two three pointers on their first two attempts. Yeah, I like the way Johnson's able to drive the basketball and find her teammates. She's going to be tough to guard tonight. Got yeah, a change in the starting lineup here for Notre Dame. The number four, not listed on my roster. Try to get a name for you in a little bit as Audrey Tingle gets the ball stripped away. Step up from the elbow is good, and Notre Dame gets a point off a turnover. Yeah, the mystery player, number four, first. <laughs> Took a bad shot, then got a turnover, steal, and then drained one. So we're going to have to find yeah, her name that's how it works. before the game goes much uh, longer. And down low to Marissa Brown. Her turnaround shot gets it to go. First points of the night for Marissa Brown. Yeah, and I think everybody knows Marissa's name, <laughs> so that'll be easy to call tonight. Because here's Stout working on Marissa Brown. Good defense there by Marissa, and she gets it off. For Kemp, and she gets it back, and there's a, a shot good. As Stout gets another one. Notre Dame cuts it to a two-point game. Here's Johnson for another three. It's good. Taylor Johnson. Both teams are on fire <laughs> yeah. to start the game. Nobody can miss. Yep. West Liberty a perfect four for four to start from the field. Notre Dame three out of four. A shot no good there for Notre Dame. Maybe a little broadcasting jinx there as that was par. That one is good. McIntyre gets that one to go. Yeah, that one went in the hard way. Back rim. Bounced up about eight feet and splashed through it. Almost another turnover there for Notre Dame. And turnovers have been a problem. They were a problem on Saturday at Glenville State. The Lady Hilltoppers committed 27 turnovers in that loss to Glenville State. And in that, and they lost earlier to Notre Dame in the season. They committed 24 turnovers. So when the Lady Hilltoppers don't take care of the ball, they don't seem to win the game. And that's so often the case in the game of basketball. As here's Taylor Johnson the Marissa Brown. Beater working on Adachi. Johnson, another tough shot. That's blocked. And here comes Ramlow for Notre Dame. Ramlow handing off to Adachi. 28 points in the victory against West Liberty earlier this season. And her first shot is good of the afternoon here tonight. Notre Dame pulls even at 11. Yeah, we're right back where we started. <laughs> Beater inside to Brown. Tough shot there, doesn't go. Marissa gets her own rebound. They're gonna call a jump ball here. Now checking into the game for the Lady Toppers, Olivia Belknap and Morgan Bruner in for Brandy Beater and Johnny Okoski. And you can see that Notre Dame is well coached and they have the scouting report on Marissa Brown. They know 
when she's going to turn left and, and shoot that half hook. And, you know, she might be advised to, to throw in a shot fake or a, or a crossover dribble <laughs> to get to the basket. There's another bucket there. Adachi off the bench. Didn't start today, which is a little bit strange for Notre Dame. This tingle goes hard to the rim, doesn't get it to go, but is fouled. This foul will go against Adachi. And like we said, she's been busy coming in off the bench. Well, I'm guessing the coach sent Adachi a message. Yeah. Uh, there, there must have been a problem why she didn't start today. And I, it looks like she received that message because she's come out and played with fire. Audrey's first free throw is good. Yeah, Adachi, the leading scorer. As a substitute now is Jada Marone is the name for number four. She checks out as there's the replay of the foul. Tingle's second free throw is good. Karolek will take it out for Notre Dame and get it to Adachi. Adachi, another tough jumper. That one's short. Rebounded by Morgan Bruner, and the Lady Toppers are off. Tingle finding Belknap, a deep three, no good. Rebounded there by McIntyre, and she brings it up the court for Notre Dame. Working on Belknap to the rim, can't get her shot to go. Tingle finds Bruner in the corner, driving. Little floater doesn't go, rebounded by Marissa Brown. The putback does go. Lady Hilltoppers regain the lead. And Marissa did a great job that time, not only getting the rebound, but keeping the ball up above her head and finishing. So here's a dodgy, another tough shot just from about the foul line, doesn't go. Lady Hope Topper's another good defensive sequence there. Tingle finds Bruner. Johnson driving to the rim, lays it in. Nice basket there for Taylor Johnson, up to eight points now. Uh, that's a crossover. Changed direction, <laughs> went past the defender, and finished the layup. Lady Hilltopper is up to a four-point lead, 17-13 here in the first quarter. It's flying by. Here's Ramlow. Aridi driving on Brown. Shot is blocked by Marissa Brown. Lady Hilltoppers will push the pace. Bruner a three. That one's short. Rebounded by Ramlow. Up to Adachi. Back to Aridi. She'll put up the three. It's good. Abby Aridi brings it into a one-point game. And I've been really impressed with the pace of play so yeah. far. Just back and forth, 94 feet. There's a turnover there, and Adachi is off for Notre Dame. And Audrey Tingle returns the favor. She's got a step on Ramlow. The rim gets it to go, and she is fouled. Audrey Tingle with an and one coming up. Wow, what a play by Tingle. I mean, I think everybody in the gym thought that Adachi was going to shoot that yeah. ball, but Tingle steps in, makes the layup. With that stoppage, that'll bring us to immediate timeout. 3.38 in the first quarter. That is flying by. Lady Hilltoppers have the three-point lead, 19-16, here on the West Liberty Sports Network. A&B Kia, the Valley's only total indoor showroom, is a proud sponsor of West Liberty Hilltopper Athletic Club. If it's cheering on the toppers or working to provide you with the best automotive shopping experience possible, A&B strives to be number one. Open seven days a week, A&B is the Valley's financing leader with the ability to say yes when other car dealers, banks, and credit unions have said no. Apply online at anbautosales.com. It's quick and easy with an answer within the hour. A&B, located directly off the Boggs Run Road exit in Benwood, West Virginia. The Mountain East Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament is coming to Wheeling March 6th through the 10th. West Banco Arena will serve as host to one of the nation's premier basketball leagues featuring the highest scoring conference in America. Action begins on March 6th at West Banco Arena and concludes on Sunday, March 10th when two champions will be crowned. Log on to mountaineast.org for more information and to secure your tickets to the 2019 Mountain East Conference Basketball Tournament presented by The Health Plan. 
back here on the West Liberty Sports Network. Lady Toppers with an early three-point lead. And this is the 13th meeting between these two schools. Notre Dame holds a brief 7-5 edge in the short series that has been so far. Lady Toppers, uh, like we said, dropped a tough decision earlier to Notre Dame. 89-84 down in South Euclid, Ohio. As Audrey Tingle connects on the and one, gives the Lady Toppers a four-point lead and brings Audrey up to five points. Here's Adachi. Nice stutter step move on Brandy Beater. Her shot doesn't go. Rebounded by Marissa Brown. Adachi with another steal. She can't get that one to go either, and the Lady Hilltoppers are off. Yeah, you got to be careful anytime she's in the neighborhood. Taylor. Yeah. How about that shot yeah. right there? Taylor Johnson knocking down yet another three. Three for three now on the game from behind the arc for Taylor Johnson. 11 points. As the rim that time is Marone. Gets that one to go. As the fast pace continues here, the ASRC. Johnson nice behind the back dribble. Tries to find Marissa Brown. Bruner thought about a quick three. So did Beater. Drives instead. Left hand no good. Rebounded by Morgan Bruner. Johnson to Beater. Beater for three. No good. So here comes Marone for Notre Dame. Chucks up the three. Doesn't go. Gonna be a loose ball foul. That'll go against the number 33, Katie Karolik. Her first. I mean, Notre Dame's third foul. And EJ, how about this? Lady Toppers have yet to commit a foul here in this first quarter. Two minutes and 16 to go. Yeah, they're playing a really crisp first quarter. It almost, it seems to me like maybe Glenville got their attention. They had won so many games in a row. Now they're coming back off a loss. They're definitely playing a sharp first quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. Tingle tried to get it up, blocked. Miss Kemp on the block. Karolik gets the return and gets it to go. First points of the game for Katie Karolik. Notre Dame pulls within three. That's the oldest play in the book, the old <laughs> give and go, and they executed it very well. Tingle with a three. It's good. Audrey Tingle from the corner answers right back. You know, from the oldest play to the newest play, that three-pointer <laughs> is the is the uh, is the name of the game these days at any level. Karolik, nice little pass. That one's going to be off the foot of Kemp and out of bounds. Lady Hilltoppers will get possession. Johnny Okoski back in the game for Audrey Tingle getting a well-deserved break. Johnson will bring it up the court for the Lady Toppers. Morgan Bruner for three. Well, somebody wanted a little bit, maybe a foul on that, maybe a little bit of contact when Morgan released. There's a ba another basket there by Karolik. Notre Dame down by four. See if West Liberty is able to get a two for one here at the end of the first quarter. Marissa Brown working on a Reedy. Nice move. Gets the turnaround to go. And the shot clock and game clock pretty much uh, matching up. Here, see if Notre Dame will hold for the last shot as the Lady Toppers did try to go for a quick two for one. Yeah, they gave it a shot, but it seemed like the shot that Brown took it. It hung on the rim for quite a yeah. while. It kind of bounced around, and Notre Dame did a smart job of taking their time inbounding it, hence they got the last shot. Here's Parr driving, gets past Beater. Can't get that one to fall. Loose ball picked up by Morgan Bruner, and that will end the first quarter of play. A fast-paced, fast quarter as the Lady Hilltoppers will take a 28-22 lead into the second quarter here on the West Liberty Sports Network.
You earned it. Let us help you save it. Belmont Savings Bank. Focused on your future. At the Country Club Rehabilitation Campus, we provide a unique environment for your loved one to feel right at home. Our residents receive the freedom of living in an apartment or personalized private suite with the care of our skilled nursing staff. A positive, healthy life starts with a good meal. We offer a full menu with fresh home-cooked food. Our skilled team of therapists design a customized rehab plan to increase residents' independence and ability to manage daily life skills at home. Experience the difference at Country Club Rehabilitation. Notre Dame College enrollment of 2100 founded in 1922, located in South Euclid, Ohio. And of course, the Falcons. The Lady Hotoppers have possession here to begin the second quarter. It's Taylor Johnson, 11 points in that first quarter. Kicks it back to Okoski. Now oh, here's Tingle working on Adachi. Great matchup between two really good point guards here in this game today. His beater's three is off. Maybe a foul called here, I believe, going against Marissa Brown. It'll be her first, team first of the game. Not just the second quarter, but the entire game. Lady Hotoppers uh, came out unscathed in that first quarter from a foul. Yeah, Notre Dame did a nice job boxing out right there, and, and Brown, you know, there's no such thing as going over the back, if you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but she did look like she pushed a little bit, got a little leverage, and, uh, and drew the foul. There's Ramblo driving to the basket. Can't get that one to go. Marissa Brown grabs her seventh rebound of the night already. Okoski to Johnson. Transition three coming. It's good. But they're going to say Taylor traveled before she got that shot off. Top her bench can't believe it. You know, where we're sitting, we don't have a, yeah, we, we do not have an angle on that. I was actually thinking take it might have here. been a foul called. Yeah, it looks like she might have uh, picked up the pivot foot. Tough call there on Taylor, who's been on fire to start the game from three. Unfortunately, that one won't count. Adachi with a jumper. That one's good. And how about that change of events for Notre Dame? They get the basket after uh, forcing Taylor into a travel call. Yeah, sort of a five-point swing, but Adachi yeah. is uh, really good at getting yeah. into the foul lane area and pulling up for a jump shot. She's knocked down a number of them today. Yeah, there's another turnover created by Adachi there. And a foul going to be called here. Is going up that time was Stout. They're going to call that one on Brandy Beater, her first team second. And to the line will go Stout. Stout's first free throw, no good. Notre Dame's first free throw attempts of the game. Second one is good. Brings it to a three-point Lady Hillshopper lead. So here comes Audrey Tingle. Beater inside the Brown, guarded by O'Reedy. Around the horn she goes and gets it to go. Marissa Brown up to eight points. Yeah, I really like that move right there by Marissa. Not only, you know, shows her, uh, her, her skill set inside, but able to finish strong with the right hand on the other side. Nice move. And O'Reedy answers back down the other end with a basket. Her first points, or her second basket of the game, giving her five. Johnson driving, using her speed. Step back, now does go up with it. Gets it to go. How about that move from Taylor Johnson? You know, whatever Taylor had for a pregame meal, she <laughs> needs to keep doing that because yeah. that basket looks really large to her right now. It's up to 13 points on five of six shooting from the field. Here's a Reedy for three. That one's short. Going to be rebounded by Notre Dame, but they're going to call a jump ball. Notre Dame will remain with possession. So it looks like a new four in here for Notre Dame. This head coach, Lauren Mesa, really emptying the bench. And like we mentioned, uh, a lot of the usual starters were not starters in this game. So like you said, EJ, maybe sending some kind of message to her team. 
Yeah, and it, it looks to me well received because Notre Dame's playing an effective first half as well. And you're going to need that bench in this game because yeah. it's just going so quickly up and back. The bench will probably decide the game. <laughs> Good inbound pass there by Marone. Finds a Dachi and another easy bucket there for her. Makes it a three-point game. Taylor Johnson lost a handle on that one, regains it. Trying to find Tingle. Knocked out of bounds by Delaney. Lady Hilltoppers will have 17 seconds on the shot clock to work with here. Tingle looking. Finds Olkowski. Tingle inside to Brown. Left-hander is good for Marissa. Number 10 on the night. Well, she can go right, she can go left. She gets low position. Really tough to defend inside. Here's a dodgy, nice turnaround move on Beater. That one rolls out. Wake on the Lady Toppers. Here's Okoski. Her three is good. Johnny Okoski knocks it down. Lady Hilltoppers open up their biggest lead of the game, eight points. I'm not used to seeing her shoot that close. That was <laughs> only about a 20-footer. I've, I've seen a lot of 25-footers lately. Marone goes to the basket. We saw a lot of contact, no call. Lady Hilltoppers get the rebound, and up court they go. Johnson to beat her. Okoski for another three. It's good. Johnny Okoski back-to-back threes. Opens up a double-digit lead for the Lady Toppers. A nice unselfish play by Beater. Again, those are like layups to a Johnny, only shooting from 20. <laughs> Adachi answers with a quick trans transition bucket. Gets it back down to nine. Adachi now double-digit points. Coming off the bench today. Johnson finds a cutting Beater working inside. Gets a shot over the right hand and gets it to go. Brandy up to five points. And EJ, this has been a really balanced attack here in the first half for the Lady Hilltoppers. It really has. Definitely on pace to go over 50 points by the halftime. Yeah. Maybe 55 at this pace. Everybody basically getting in on the act. There's a three, no good. Rebounded by Taylor Johnson. The Lady Hilltoppers, you can tell, they want to push the pace here in this opening half. Hey, come on! Johnson lost the handle. Koski thought about the heat check. Now it's down to Marissa Brown, and she gets it to go. Notre Dame looks like, West Liberty looks like they're may, maybe wearing down the Falcons here. Well, they're so effective from the outside, so Notre Dame has to guard. That opens up Brown on the inside. It's really tough right now for Notre Dame. There's a rebound by Marone inside. Gets it out to Adachi. She tries the three. It's good, but it's not going to count. A three-second call here. Called on the Falcons. West Liberty will have possession when we come back on the West Liberty Sports Network. More than ever, people are busier and need to stretch a dollar. Main Street understands. We believe a bank should help. Maybe that's why we keep growing. With extended hours, easy parking, higher interest savings accounts, and the lowest fees in the area. Locally owned with local decision makers. Built by the people for the people. We don't want to be the biggest bank. We just want to be the best. Main Street Bank. Undo's Catering. Family owned since 1953. With newly remodeled catering facilities throughout the Ohio Valley, Undo's can accommodate banquets from 25 to 700 guests. Undo's caters weddings, picnics, corporate events, holiday events, and job site drop-offs for the construction and oil and gas industry. Call 304-233-5566 today. You see the graphic for the Mountain East Conference Tournament just a week away, if you can believe it or not. As long as basketball seasons are, it always seems like they go by so fast. And the Mountain East Conference a, Tournament be kicking off next week. They go by fast if you're winning. Yeah, that's true. If, if you're losing, they can be a long four months. The Lady Hilltoppers have already punched their ticket to that tournament, and this could be a possible first-round matchup here uh, preview today between the Lady Hilltoppers and the Lady Falcons. Lady Hilltoppers have other ideas. They want to move up in the conference. 
Just a game behind the two and three seed, Charleston in Concord. Many Hilltoppers down to 10 on the shot clock. That three is up and good by Morgan Bruner. Her signature spot. Yeah, nice shot by Morgan there. Morgan in the corner. I'm really looking forward to the tournament in Wheeling. I hope the community embraces yeah. it. It's uh, it's a great opportunity to maybe have this thing here more than the next couple years. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a week full of good basketball. There's a three up by Marone and good. Notre Dame hanging around. Here's Audrey. Audrey on the night, eight points, five assists here in the opening half for Audrey. Call three second call here on Marissa Brown. Notre Dame will get possession. That's a call you don't often hear no. uh, nowadays, but uh, you know Marissa knows where her bread is buttered, and she's certainly going to work that lane area. And we've had a three-second call on both teams now. They're going to call a foul here on Morgan Bruner. It's McIntyre drove to the basket. In Morgan's first. Team's third. And West Liberty had no fouls in the first quarter. Notre Dame get to pick up a foul here in the second quarter with three and a half left. First free throw is good by McIntyre. Her first trip to the line today. Second one good as well. Notre Dame get, cuts it back down to 11 point lead. Bruner gets it down to Brown. They're going to call a foul here, I believe, on Abby O'Reedy. It'll be O'Reedy's second, or her first, excuse me. Tingle gets it into Bruner. Jumper is good. 18-foot uh, jumper there for Morgan Bruner. Gets it to go. Up to five points. Marone couldn't get that one to go. Wanted a foul. None called. And Tingle will get it up the court. Way across court on the Belknap. Inside to Brown. Good passing there by the Lady Hilltoppers. Lots of assists on lots of yeah. baskets. That's add up, the recipe. Add up to 51 points before halftime. Yep. 13 assists so far on 20 made field goals. Yeah. There's a three there by Marone. Her second in uh, as many attempts. There's Morgan Bruner answers right back. Lady Hilltoppers, they don't mind playing this transition high pass style game. Boy, and that's such a great feeling when you're a shooter like Bruner to know you've got it going. <laughs> She's just catching and looking. Marone went to the basket, missed the layup. Johnson being pressured by Karolik. Karolik will be called for the foul. Karolik second, team second. Back in the game for the Lady Hilltoppers, Brandy Beater checking in for Olivia Belknap. 2-12 remaining here in the opening half. Lady Hilltoppers enjoying a 15-point lead. The Hilltoppers have connected on 12 of their last 13 attempts. So here's Beater driving. Turns that one over to Dachi, of course. Comes up with it, and down the court she goes. Good defense there by Morgan Bruner, and Lady Hilltoppers get Notre Dame to cough it right back up. Bruner thought about the three, gets it to Johnson instead, and her three is good. Taylor Johnson remains perfect from behind the three-point line. And nice assist by Bruner. She could have easily taken that shot. Yeah. Instead gave her shot up for a better shot by Johnson, and it's three more points. Taylor up to 16 points in the opening half as there's a basket for Parr. Lady Hilltoppers lead cut down to 16. Scored 99 points on Saturday on pace to go over that here in this game today. Marissa finds Audrey. Bruner thought about a quick three drives instead. They drive to the basket and get fouled. Foul going to be on Julie Kemp. And Kemp's first. 
Well, I love to watch offensive efficiency, and really West Liberty putting on a clinic here in the yeah. first half. Able to score from the outside, able to score inside. Really nice uh, effort out there. Yeah, and a revenge effort as well, because like I mentioned, Notre Dame handed the Lady Toppers a loss earlier in the season. But the Lady Hilltoppers, you mentioned efficiencies. They're shooting 68.8% right now from the field. As Morgan Bruner knocks both free throws down. Perfect from the line today are the Lady Hilltoppers. And EJ, how about from three? Over 70% right now are the Lady Hilltoppers. You're going to win a lot of games shooting that well <laughs> from the field and from three. Here's a Dachi shot from the elbow. Knocked down by Tingle. No call. I'm going to say last off of Morgan Bruner. Notre Dame will keep possession. The Ramlo throwing it into Adachi. There's Stout to the basket, gets that one to go over Okoski. Hey. 35 seconds remaining here in the second half on a rolling clock. Lady Hilltoppers enjoying a big 16 point lead and will slow things down here at the end of the half. Bruner working on Ramlow. Can't get that one to go. Notre Dame has possession. Shot clock is off. And here's Adachi. Down low. Here's Ramlow for three. It rolls out. Rebounded by Okoski. Five seconds on the clock. Here's Taylor Johnson. Gets the shot up. No good. <laughs> First shot, really, Taylor has really missed here in this opening half. And had a feeling it was probably had a good chance of going in as well. She finishes the half with 16 points. Marissa Brown right behind her with 14 points and nine rebounds as well. We'll have some more complete second half. We'll have some more complete halftime statistics when we come back for the start of the second half here on the West Liberty Sports Network. I'm Lauren and I'm a broadcasting major at West Liberty and today we're going to show you what it's like to be in the program. Now I'm on my way to my news writing and reporting class with Professor Beagle. First and foremost, our mission here is to inform. Reporters tell folks what's going on <coughs> in the world around them. West Liberty was a really small school in a really nice area, but not too far away from Wheeling, which is a pretty populous place. So it really was just kind of that quiet area where I knew I could do what I wanted to do, but also have the help that I needed. Now we're heading into my broadcast practicum class with Chris Lee. Who's gonna, who wants to direct on this Wednesday? Let's try it out. Who's first? who's number one? So that'd be you, then. that's easy. Right when you get into the broadcasting program as a freshman, you really do get that hands-on experience right away. They do put you in classes where you're learning how to use equipment, you're learning how to write. They really do want you to get that hands-on experience and not just sit in a classroom and look at the board. I'm also a student ambassador at West Liberty and today I'm giving a tour to a prospective student. I became an ambassador at West Liberty because I wanted to help students out the way West Liberty helped me out. This was my very first place that I toured, and I was supposed to tour five other schools, and I decided not to go to those tours because West Liberty really helped me out the very first time, and I knew that this was going to be the place that I wanted to spend my four years of college. Today, I'm directing Hilltopper Sports Weekly in the WLUTV studio. educational programming that goes out to over 100,000 homes on Channel 14 kind of gives the students more of a place to grow. They get to learn very quickly how to run a television show. 
we get to direct, we get to do a lot of different things that you wouldn't get to do at other schools this young. So tonight we have a doubleheader basketball game. We're about to go into the truck and get ready for the broadcast. So we have some of our student production crew members here. They're actually freshmen. We have Kelsey running instant replay and we have Beth running graphics tonight. We have Chad up here. Chad's our ultimate producer. And then we have our freelance director, Trent. He used to be a student here and now he's gonna be directing our games tonight. So now we're gonna head up to the floating track and set up our tight camp. So we have our own production truck, which we use for our home and sometimes away football games. And then we also use it for basketball games here as well. It's a really nice, really nice facility for us to use. But being a part of the crew has taught me so much. It's honestly helped out with my classes. It's helped out with me being more confident in a lot of things that I've done here. It really teaches you to be out of your comfort zone because you are a part of live television. I'm sidelining for the game and I'm about to go talk to Coach Cooper and get his thoughts on it. I really had no expectations of myself coming into college, but the more that I was here and the longer I was here, the more I grew out. Not only am I on the student production crew and a student ambassador, but I'm also a resident assistant on campus now. So I'm pretty involved. In high school, Lauren would have never done any of this. She was the shyest person ever and she never wanted to do anything that involved people, but now I've kind of like branched out and it's really helped me out in so many ways. And you can tell by this score here that they want this game very bad. Player might go. Thank you, Lauren. I hope this gave you a look at what it's like to be a broadcasting major at West Liberty. For more information, check out the website. Sydney Stewart. I'm a psychology major here at West Liberty and I'm going to show you what it's like. Let's go check out my cognitive psychology class with Dr. Fletcher. We talked about different ways of measuring the brain and I said I would bring you something to show that as well. So we've got uh, this is a Mindflex game and the idea is you use your brain power literally your brain power to move this ball around. I think West Liberty honestly surprised me. It was not my dream school and then once I decided to come here at first I was a little bit timid about it and I just kind of thought well this is what it's going to be but after being here even just one semester I realized that this was going to be so much more than I could have asked for. Today we're dissecting a sheep brain. At West Liberty, they have, um, we do different events like SEPA is one of our big uh, research events. We also have just smaller ones around kind of the area. So a lot of the research and coursework here at West Liberty is really individualized with our professors. Let's go check out my clinical psychology class with Dr. McLean. So far, we've talked about like what is the scope of practice of clinical psychology. So you remember that big definition I showed you? That Recently, new to the college is the graduate program for clinical psychology, and I was able to attend um, undergraduate here, and I'm planning on um, actually applying and doing my graduate degree here. In into okay, what are the characteristics of somebody who's a clinical psychologist? What are the effective effective ingredients in being a therapist? Now let's check out my introduction to learning class. I wanted to bring in some, some old school types of recording measures that we've used in psychology as well as some things that are still being used today. So do it for 30 seconds, hold it up so she can see it, and then she's going to, with her right hand only, if you drop one, let it go and keep going. A lot of the classes here, um, the teachers will actually have you do the book work and most of the studying outside of the classes. And then when you meet at your class times, we do a lot of like hands-on activities where we will use like practical knowledge of what we learned in the book. So a lot of the time you're doing the book work before you show up, but once you're in class, it's really entertaining and you're really learning a lot. For my special topics class, I meet individually with Dr. McClain. The only thing I did want to incorporate in these were um, 
I showed interest um, actually in doing a special topics course where I could personally teach different classes and I presented this idea to Dr. McLean and here at West Liberty like the professors are really good in the psych department and making sure that they can help you with anything that you show interest in. So I showed an interest in teaching. She created a special topics course just so that I could start teaching in some of the smaller classes. This is our psych lounge. Um, right now we have a few of our psychology club officers meeting. Um, it's also a great place just to hang out and study. We have a psychology club um, here at West Liberty and um, it's a really good place to kind of start getting involved and starting getting to know other people in the program. We're playing a game right now, it's called Escape Room in a Box. We have the Psychi Division which is our honor society for our psychology students and it's actually like an international organization. Psychi has opened up so many scholarship opportunities for me. I hope this gave you a better look at what the psychology program is like here at West Liberty. Um, check out our website for more information. Hey, I'm Heather. I'm a political science major at West Liberty University, and I'm going to show you what it's like to be a student in the program. to criminal law with Dr. Barney. My aunt was the one that actually suggested that I go into political science because I'm thinking about going to law school. And she said a lot of applicants are in pre-law and criminal justice. I chose West Liberty because it's closer to home. It's a lot more affordable. Um, I'm a presidential scholar and I got the Promise Scholarship because my GPA was so high when I graduated high school and that combined with my ACT score, it was pretty obvious I was going to go here. Now we're heading into Ethics of Criminal Justice with Professor Walters. So, did anybody see that they are starting to come out with different victims saying that they fabricated their stories? Yes. So, what are your thoughts on that? Generally, it's a lot of lecture-based classes, but it's a really laid-back setting. Yep. So if you have a question halfway through the lecture, you can just ask it. They make the classes a lot more interesting because they throw in a lot of humor depending on the material. Now we're going to head to my independent study with Professor Fitzpatrick. So remember a concept is just a broad idea of something, a broad idea of something. So like an idea of a chair, an idea of size of the economy, an idea of unemployment. Right now I'm taking an independent study with Professor Fitzpatrick. We're learning about methods and research techniques. I am working on a research paper where I have to pick a topic. The topic that I chose for it, I chose human trafficking. And my whole hypothesis is human trafficking is more likely to happen in an autocratic country than it would be in a democracy. So that's all frequency distribution is. I like to go to Jasmine's Cafe and get a coffee and study. Um, can I get a small caramel delight? When I first came to West Liberty, I thought it was going to be a much bigger place than it actually is. I thought it was going to be a lot harder to find places. I thought professors were going to be straightforward, they don't really have time for your problems, but they've actually been really helpful. It's a small campus atmosphere, so everyone knows pretty much who you are, and they all, they're all interested in what you're doing. Now we're heading into political science fiction with Professor Fitzpatrick. All right, so today we're going to talk about The Handmaid's Tale talking about The Handmaid's Tale. Obviously last class we didn't talk about that much. Um, so today we're really going to get into the text of it. So Professor Fitzpatrick chose different books that we have to read. A lot of it is kind of futuristic government based. So we'll read books like that. We just finished reading The Handmaid's Tale. We'll talk about them and he'll relate it back to real world situations. Hopefully this gave you a look at what it's like to be a political science major at West Liberty. For more information, check out the website.
back here on the West Liberty Sports Network where the Lady Hilltoppers currently enjoy a 16-point lead, 59-43. Still halftime here, so we'll get you some of those first half highlights here. Starting off with the first bucket of the game, Taylor Johnson making it 3-0 there. Uh, her first uh, shot of the game. As now we move on, Taylor Johnson here again, going to have a layup. She was on fire in that opening half. Made that 17-13. There's a three-point shot by Audrey Tingle. She had a big first half as well. So Koski got in on the action as well. This was first one of her first back-to-back uh, -back threes that she would hit in that second quarter. And here's a nice pass from Olivia Belknap down low to Marissa Brown. That made the game 51-36. And Taylor Johnson here hitting a nice three-point shot in the corner. Taylor in the opening half was four for four from behind the arc as we take a look at some of the team stats from that opening half. Notre Dame shooting uh, not too bad, 46.2%, but nowhere can compete with West Liberty 66.7 from the field three-point percentage. West Liberty over their uh, field goal percentage at 71.4. They went 10 of 14 from behind three. Notre Dame shot a very respectable 50% from three. Free throw percentage, 75% for Notre Dame, 100% for the Hilltoppers. Rebounds, West Liberty down, dominating that aspect of the game, 20 to 12. Two steals for Lady Hilltoppers, 15 assists. Six assi steals for Notre Dame and eight assists for the Falcons as well. As we take a look at some individual stats, Marone and Adachi both with 10 for Notre Dame. Marone with two assists, Parr with two rebounds. Taylor Johnson with 16 points, Audrey Tingle seven assists, and Marissa Brown nine rebounds. Marissa just one rebound away from a double-double. Audrey Tingle three assists, two points away from a double-double. I bet that we probably will see both of those happen here in the second half. And so we're just about ready to start uh, start things up. Lady Hilltoppers, see if they can uh, keep up the hot shooting, EJ. Wow, what a first half. I mean, that's <laughs> it's really amazing. You look at those highlights, and it, you think, well, they never missed. Well, they almost did never miss. <laughs> I mean, shooting such a, a high percentage. Let's see if they can keep it going. Down one to Marissa Brown. Easy bucket there for Marissa. Giving Marissa 16 points on the game. Yeah, and she's really effective going to her right hand. You know, you hardly ever see her miss that layup. Puts it up strong. There's a three up by Ramlo, no good. It, actually, it is good. It bounced around and rolled in. Shooter's touch there for Kylie Ramlo. And you could see the disbelief by Coach Cooper standing right in front of us. He thought she had missed it as well, and it uh, found the friendly roll. Ramlo had a career high 32 points last Wednesday, or last Thursday, excuse me, against Concord. Notre Dame almost pulled off the upset in that one. Here's Brown again. Gets that one to go, working on Kemp, and it's pretty clear EJ Lady Hilltoppers trying to establish their All-American post, uh, post center here in the second half. Yeah, and rightly so, and Kemp's going to have a hard time defending down there. Doesn't really have the size or the height to guard Brown. Adachi thought about a three, drives instead, puts up the jumper, no good. Rebounded hey! by Stout. Three up that time by Adachi, doesn't go. Rambo thought about another one. Dachi inside, Arini gets that, or excuse me, that's Karolik, gets that one to go. Her sixth point of the night. There's a steal by Karolik. Easy basket here for Notre Dame. Lady Hilltoppers, 10th turnover of the game, and I mentioned turnovers have been a problem at some points this season. We got a problem with the shot clock here. It looked like they forgot to reset on the uh, on the make, but if I was West Liberty, I'd be a little bit concerned because you're shooting at such a high percentage, yet you're only up 13 points. And uh, and the reason for that is that Notre Dame is is really effective driving the ball to the basket, and the Hilltoppers are going to have to move their feet a little better, stay in front of the uh, stay in front of the offense. Tingle down low again to Marissa Brown. That shot no good. good. Defense that time down low by Kemp. 
Here's Karolik driving, gets it out to Oridi. They say offensive foul on Kylie Ramblo. She can't believe it. Actually, they're going to call that one on Oridi, excuse me. It'll be her second, team first of the, half, uh, of the quarter. Marissa Brown working on Oridi again, doesn't get that one to roll in. Adachi working on Beater. Nice spin there by Oridi. Her shot doesn't roll in either. And all of a sudden, both teams uh, hitting a dry spell shooting wise. Yeah, but getting exactly what they want on offense, just not making the shot. Johnson trying to chase that one down, or excuse me, Okoski after the errant pass from Taylor. Another turnover there by the Lady Hilltoppers, and Notre Dame will get possession. And like you mentioned, DJ, just a 13 point game. Still a lot of basketball left in this one. Dachi at the step back three, no good. Rebounded by O'Reedy. There's a Dachi again, that one won't go. Johnson finds Beater, spot up three. Off the rim. Tingle chasing it, collides with the bench. It's okay. Good hustle though by Audrey Tingle. It sure was. She chased it down deep in the corner, and like you said, luckily she that bench. <laughs> luckily that bench was forgiving one. You know, she went into the West Liberty bench. Good thing they helped chairs fold. <laughs> they helped her out there. Rambo's shot no good. Beater driving, kicks it out to Taylor Johnson. She is fouled on the three-point attempt. She's been perfect from behind the arc today. And she will remain perfect. A chance at the uh, unconventional three-point play. Now, I like the way that Beater drove the ball into the middle there. Didn't really have much, and she kicked it out to an open Johnson for the good look. Johnson's first free throw, no good. Two more for Taylor. Lady Hilltopper's first missed free throw of the game. And then he shot six. Second one is good. Morgan Bruner in the game for Johnny Okoski. Olivia Belknap will be checking in for Taylor Johnson if she can connect on this free throw. Taylor up to 17 points. Free throw is good by Taylor. Olivia Belknap will check in. Toppers back up by 15. Ramlo gets it down to O'Reedy. Double teamed. Shot is good by Stout. Notre Dame keeps hanging around. Belknap received a tough pass from Tingle. Tingle now driving. Nice basket there by Audrey Tingle. That was really a tough shot. <laughs> it was like a line drive layup off her left hand. And she got the roll. She did. Mercer Brown is like, where's my roll from the rim? There's a basket. Ramblow gets another one. Well, Tingle might have to take Brown to uh, layup school. <laughs> Adachi with almost another steal. Adachi credited with three, but I feel like she's got at least five or six. A block out of bounds. Lady Hilltoppers will have possession. Checking in the game now for Notre Dame is McIntyre. She'll take Ramlow's spot. Ramlow's been quiet. I mentioned had 32 points less than a week ago against Concord, and Lady Hilltoppers have held her in check. Here's Bruner. Finding Beater, her three, no good. Rebounded by Marone. 
Here's a three by Aridi. It's good. Abby Aridi cuts this to a 10 point game. Notre Dame just hanging around, hanging around. Let's Liberal try to force the ball inside to Brown this possession and get a good look. Working it around the horn. Now it's a down low to Marissa Brown. Say she will travel. Good work down low by O'Reedy. Notre Dame has cut West Liberty's lead down to 10, 67-57. 4.43 remaining here in the third quarter on the West Liberty Sports Network. A&B Kia, the Valley's only total indoor showroom, is a proud sponsor of West Liberty Hilltopper Athletic Club. If it's cheering on the toppers or working to provide you with the best automotive shopping experience possible, A&B strives to be number one. Open seven days a week, A&B is the Valley's financing leader with the ability to say yes when other car dealers, banks, and credit unions have said no. Apply online at anbautosales.com. It's quick and easy with an answer within the hour. A&B, located directly off the Boggs Run Road exit in Benwood, West Virginia. The Mountain East Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament is coming to Wheeling March 6th through the 10th. West Banco Arena will serve as host to one of the nation's premier basketball leagues featuring the highest scoring conference in America. Action begins on March 6th at West Banco Arena and concludes on Sunday, March 10th when two champions will be crowned. Log on to mountaineast.org for more information and to secure your tickets to the 2019 Mountain East Conference Basketball Tournament presented by The Health Plan. Back here on the West Liberty Sports Network, Lady Hilltoppers lead by 10. As you mentioned, we were watching some games for you uh, in the region that had some implications for the West Liberty University Hilltoppers. And currently, Concord is getting stunned by West Virginia State, 57-45. That game in the third quarter, so Concord on upset alert. Charleston only with a five-point lead over Wise. And Edinburgh trailing by 27 to IUP, so... Some regional teams that West Liberty's trying to chase, all uh, in a little bit of trouble. Good news for Lady Hilltoppers because they're leading by 10. But the bad news for Lady Hilltoppers, Notre Dame on a 5-0 run to cut this game down to 10 points. And yeah, Edinburgh down 27, ouch. There's a foul going to be called on Adachi. And we mentioned uh, the regional rankings came out today. Edinburgh was at six. And IUP was at four, so that was a very good matchup, four and six between two current tournament teams. And it's all IUP, like we said, 27 points, but uh, that is uh, that is a shocker. Beater receiving some contact, able to try to come up with the ball. They're going to call a jump ball. Arrow is in possession of Notre Dame. Lady Hilltoppers, EJ, having a tough time getting a basket here of late. Scoreless in the last minute, 35. Yeah, and it's not because they're not getting good looks. They're getting the same shots they had the first half, just, you know, rimming out a little bit or not finishing layups. And, you know, you look up and Notre Dame's only down 10 points. Yeah, West Liberty one for six on their last six field goal attempts. There's going to be a foul out here on number on Audrey Tingle. Audrey's first, team first, and... Andrew Tingle not agreeing with that call, but Rambla will go to the line. Hey, watch pressure on. First one is good. Rambla's first attempts at the line today. Second one good as well, and we're down to eight-point lead here for the Lady Hilltoppers. 7-0 run now for Notre Dame. Koski gets it down low to Brown, working on a Reedy. Brown shot, no good. Rebounded by Adachi. Adachi using her speed, getting up the court. Finds Marone. Her shot is good. Down to a six-point game. Here's Bruner. Spot up three. No good. Brown with a tough, almost grabbed it. Audrey Tingle does. Beat her. 4-3, nothing but net for Brandy Beater. Back up to a nine-point lead. The Lady Hilltoppers, first bucket in over two minutes. Yeah, and that'll stop the bleeding a little bit. Nice shot there by uh, by Beater from the uh, from the wing. Here's Adachi finding Ramlo. Ramlo's starting to heat up a little bit in this second half, up to seven points. Here's Adachi, Leonard Ames' leading scorer, adds another one, up to 12 points. On the yeah. night for Adachi. And how many times have we said her name tonight? Yeah, she uh, 
One of the better point guards in the Mountain East Conference for sure. Marissa Brown with her turnaround shot, no good. And Marissa struggling to get any of her shots to fall. That shot, no good. Audrey Tingle comes up with a rebound. Lady Toppers pushing the pace. Yeah, Marissa's having a hard time with the size of Veridi inside. You know, she's got a, a little bit more girth to her, and she's pushing her off her spot. Yeah, definitely a better matchup, it seems, for Notre Dame than it was for Kemp. So Marone drives at the basket, is fouled. That'll go against Morgan Bruner. It'll be her second, team's second. Marone will get on the line. Hilltoppers up seven. Marone's first attempts from the line. Her first one is good. Taylor Johnson checking back in for Brandy Beater. Taylor tied for the team lead in points with Marissa Brown at 18. Second one, no good. Remains a six-point game. I'm going to say this one was last off of Notre Dame. Lady Hilltopper possession. EJ, what are the Lady Hilltoppers going to do here to get back into that sink that we saw in an offensively in the first half? Well, looks like looks like they're going to get a chance to talk <laughs> about it because Notre Dame's called a timeout here, which I think will help West Liberty. Yeah. I think they could I think they could use that. Yep, so with that timeout, we'll take it with them. 225 remaining in the third quarter. West Liberty up by six here on the West Liberty Sports Network. Savings starts here. Belmont Savings Bank, focused on your future. At the Country Club Rehabilitation Campus, we provide a unique environment for your loved one to feel right at home. Our residents receive the freedom of living in an apartment or personalized private suite with the care of our skilled nursing staff. A positive, healthy life starts with a good meal. We offer a full menu with fresh home-cooked food. Our skilled team of therapists design a customized rehab plan to increase residents' independence and ability to manage daily life skills at home. Experience the difference at Country Club Rehabilitation. Back on the West Liberty Sports Network, Lady Hilltoppers up by six. Hilltoppers just shooting just four of 13 here in this third quarter. After going 22 of 33 in the opening half. And it looks like Notre Dame, well, no, they're in a matchup man-to-man -man right now. I think they'll go into Brown. There they go. Tingle fought about a three, drives instead, kicks it back to Bruner. She will release the three. It's good. Morgan Bruner gives the Lady Hilltoppers a little bit more breathing room, up to nine points. And, EJ, you got to think that's something that uh, Coach Cooper probably just drew up there in that last time out. Yeah, I think so. I think they wanted to go into Brown, which they did. She didn't have anything, so she kicked it out and it found its way to Bruner for a three, and then Notre Dame responds. Yeah, Ramla responds. Like I said, she's heating up here in this second half, up to 10 points for her. And it's back to a six point lead. Brown had that one poked away and ends up in the hands of Stout, and Notre Dame will come up again. 13th turnover of the night, and Adachi cuts it to four. Yeah, Notre Dame has found something here with. Uh, with who is guarding Brown, you know, right now into the game, number 44. Uh, and Shane I, Davidson. Yeah, I don't see her on my list either, but, you know, they found something in there where they can bump Marissa off her spot, and right now it's proven effective. Here's Ramler working on Okoski. Her shot is good, but it's not going to count. They say a foul on the floor before the shot on Okoski. It'll be Johnny's first, team third. So Notre Dame will get a fresh shot clock to work with here. Minute and nine remaining here in the third quarter. Lady Hilltopper's 16 point lead has evaporated on him, down to just four. Here's Adachi. Big part of the reason why. Driving on Tingle. Her shot no good. Good defense there by Audrey, and she'll break it up the court for the Lady Hilltoppers. Finds Okoski to Taylor Johnson. Wide open look in the corner. A little bit short off the front of the rim. We're going to say out of bounds 
on who? Or say Adachi stepped on the baseline. Lady Hilltoppers will get possession. 44.4 remaining in this third quarter. Yeah, good scrap there between Adachi and Tingle. Close to being a held ball. Yeah. But the uh, but Adachi's foot was on the line. Back to West Liberty. Here's Brown. Gets it to Johnson. Back down to Brown. Lady Hilltoppers had her going early, and they're going to get a foul drawn here. Going to go against Shay Davidson, the sophomore out of Avon, Ohio. And a nice move by Brown there. She took her time, took an extra dribble, got her balance, and forced a foul from the Notre Dame defender. I think she's going to need to do more of that yeah. and work a little bit harder as this game goes on if she's going to produce. Marissa goes two for two at her first trip of the line, give her 20 points on the game. Lady Hilltoppers back up by six. I got to give a shout out there to Herb Mench. He's uh, he delivered the job before us over here. <laughs> I was getting a little bit, a uh, little bit raspy. Adachi dribbles that one off of Bruner's foot. Notre Dame will keep possession. Only 12 seconds on the shot clock. Gets it into Stout. Working on Okoski. A shot no good by Davidson. Rebounded by Bruner. 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Knocked away again by Adachi. Like I said, she's been all over the court today. So Andy credited with three steals, but she's had a number of deflections and and then uh, all, making all kinds of problems for Lady Hilltoppers. She's pesky. Tingle, five seconds remaining. Bruner in the corner, driving. Time will run out here on the third quarter. Lady Hilltoppers hanging on to a six-point lead. One quarter left here. And a, maybe a preview matchup between a first-round matchup between Notre Dame and West Liberty in the Mountain East Conference Tournament here on West Liberty Sports Network. Your business keeps you busy all day. You need to save time and money. Main Street understands, so we offer convenient service and advice. Maybe that's why we keep growing. We have business checking, the absolute lowest fees, and savings with higher interest rates. Locally owned with local decision makers. Built by the people, for the people. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Main Street Bank. I chose to stay in the area because I grew up just 45 minutes away from West Liberty and uh, when the opportunities presented themselves with this healthcare management and how great the school is and baseball and everything that came into play, I couldn't surpass it. It was awesome and uh, the school itself, everything here is amazing. Our professors are setting us up for success. There's always something to do up here. I've been here for a few years now and, and the feeling's surreal every day. You couldn't ask for much more. Welcome back to the West Liberty Sports Network. You see there, you can get your MBA online at West Liberty University if you're looking for a new career or another educational goal. Ten affordable courses available online at westliberty.edu. So here's Taylor Johnson out of the timeout, gets it to Beaver. And a bad pass there, or miscommunication, I should say, between Beaver and Johnson. And another turnover for the Lady Hilltoppers, up to 16. And I mentioned in the loss earlier this season, Lady Hilltoppers turned it over 24 times at Notre Dame. The big reason why Notre Dame was victorious in that game. They've created 15 so far here in this one. Basically a quarter left. Here's Adachi, a step back. No good. Rebounded by Brown. Rests up to 14 rebounds. Johnson to the basket, gets it to go. And one coming up for Taylor Johnson. She's been quiet here in the second half until that. Yeah, West Liberty needed that right there. They had a good, a good defensive possession at the other end. And then you see Beater here finding Johnson for the end one. Get back, get just back. what the doctor ordered. <laughs> and speaking of doctors, I, I have to give a shout out to our, our colleague, Todd Allen, who's, yeah. who's sitting at home tonight. He's not feeling well. You know, Todd, uh, get well soon, and we'll see you Saturday at Wheeling Jesuit. Yeah, we know Todd's uh, Todd's watching back at home, but, uh, yeah, he's come down with quite the sickness, so definitely get well soon, Todd. 
Worst time of the year, I know for him, he's probably kicking himself at uh, the end of the basketball season. It's getting down to the nitty gritty as there's an offensive foul going to be called on Katie Karolik. The Lady Hilltoppers will get possession. Up by nine and maybe starting to feel like maybe regaining control of this game. Well, every possession is important. Let's see what they do. If I, you know, the one constant is to try to drop the ball into Brown every single possession and let her either go to the basket or kick it out. Oh, there it was, and Marissa Brown couldn't get it to go. Good defense down low by Aridi, and she's done a great job here on Marissa Brown in this second half. That basket didn't go by Karolik. It's Tingle. Had options up the court, decides to hold on to it. Okoski gets it down to Brown. Easy bucket there for Marissa Brown. Good offensive movement there by the Lady Hilltoppers. Brown still working hard. She outfought two Notre Dame defenders for the rebound at the one end. Got position and a nice angle for the deuce at the offensive end. Going to call a foul here by the trail official. Go against Taylor Johnson. Taylor's first. Team first in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Marissa Brown up to 22 points, 15 rebounds. First one good by Marone. Mentioned we might see a couple double-doubles. Marissa obviously getting hers. Audrey Tingle two assists away to join Marissa in the double-double crew. Marone's second one good as well. Cuts it back to a nine-point game. Here's Audrey Tingle getting it to Johnson. Okoski over to Brandy Beater, who was honored before today's game for her 1,000th career point. Back to Brandy. Down low to Marissa Brown. Basket is good for Marissa. Back-to-back -back possessions for the Lady Hilltoppers. And you can see Brown getting more comfortable going against the size of Notre Dame. Here's Adachi driving. Nice basket with the right hand there by Sena Adachi. Tell that's the girl that Notre Dame wants the ball in her hands here in this fourth quarter. And she's really fun to watch. You know, she can put the ball on the floor. She can shoot the pull-up jumper. And a great defender, too. Beater cut it in the lane. Went up, fouled by Marone. She can't believe it. Actually, they're going to call that on Oridi. thought that was on Marone. Beater will head to the line. Brandy's first attempts at the free throw line of the day. Lady Hilltoppers have just shot 11 free throws. This will be 12 and 13. The 12th is no good by Brandy. On the other end, Notre Dame's only shot 10. So officials really letting a play here today. Yeah, I think it's been a well-officiated game. Yeah. You know, the, the I like the pace and the tempo, and it has not been bogged down by many whistles. And Brandy 0 for 2 on that attempt at the line. And I'm sure somewhere Marone's yelling, ball don't lie, on that foul that she couldn't believe was called. Down low to Oridi, double teamed by Okoski and Brown, but gets it out to Stout. Gets her own rebound. Karolik, tough shot, no good. Rebounded by Marone, they'll say last off of Audrey Tingle. As Morgan Brunner checks back in for Brandy Beater. 23 seconds on the shot clock here for Notre Dame. And West Liberty doing a better job of moving their feet as of late, making shots tough for Notre Dame, and you can see their shooting percentage is coming down. Yeah. Through the wall. Through the wall. Notre Dame shooting 45.3% to West Liberty's 56. Adachi couldn't get that one to roll home, but she was fouled. Johnny going to be whistled for the foul there, her second, team second of the fourth quarter. Sena Adachi will go to the line. First one is good. And that's just a tough matchup there by Okoski. I'm not sure how she ended up on Odachi. Yeah. Uh, but the little guard from Notre Dame knew exactly what to do and, and drew the foul. Adachi one of two at the line. She's up to 18 points, 17, excuse me. Scored 28 in Notre Dame's win over West Liberty earlier this season. Here's Johnson finding Okoski. Lady Hilltoppers trying to use some clock here. On the seven on the shot clock. Here's Bruner. They're going to say she stepped on the baseline. Notre Dame will have possession. 
Checking in again on some of those scores around the region. Concord still trailing double digits to State. And Charleston up five over Wise. Edinburgh down big to IUP. The Lady Hilltoppers need to take care of business and some possible moving up could be happening next week for them. There's a basket for Marone. Cutting nets to a six-point game. Here's Tingle. And EJ, I just have a feeling we might be in for an exciting finish here in this final six minutes. Notre Dame won't go away. Tingle's left-hander won't go. Stay, stay, stay! Notre Dame stay! enjoying a 5-0 run. There's a three up, no good. Rebounded by Stout. Notre Dame gets an extra possession. Karolik driving. Working on Tingle, a little bit of a size mismatch there. Uses her size to her advantage. Cuts it to four. She really did, and I like the way she changed direction with the dribble, used the ball fake, and got the easy deuce. There's a three up by Morgan Bruner. Off the front iron, no good. Transition, here's Karolik to the rim. Reverse layup, no good, but she is fouled by Marissa Brown. That'll be Marissa's second foul, team third. Beater and Fodor set to come back in. Karolik's first attempts from the line today. First one is good. And it looks like your prognostication is proving to be true here as Notre Dame cuts the lead to three. And... Uh, is this the first time we've seen Fodor in the game for West Liberty? It is. Grace's first uh, first appearance of the basketball game. She checks in for Audrey Tingle. Brandy Beater back in for Johnny Okoski as Taylor gets that one swatted away from behind by Karolik. 23 on the shot clock here for the Lady Hilltoppers. Morgan Bruner will throw it in. And Coach Cooper may be bringing in Fodor to try to guard Adachi a little bit. She's fresh and she's got the athleticism. Let's see if that happens. Down low to Marissa Brown. And she had that one tipped away. Good defense by Shade Davidson. Notre Dame, chance to tie. Down by three. Under five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Here's Davidson, jumper, no good. Rebounded by Stout. Another extra possession for the Lady Falcons. Karolik driving on the lane, can't get that one to go. Another offensive rebound. Davidson up strong, that one does go. And the Lady Hilltoppers lead is cut to one. Timeout gonna be called here by Coach Cooper, talking things over. Lady Hilltoppers were up 16 at half. Lead is down to one, with 4.34 remaining here in the fourth quarter on the West Liberty Sports Network. Back on the West Liberty Sports Network, Lady Hilltoppers playing in their final home game of the season. The final time these seniors will play here at the ASRC. Not the final game of the season. The final game will be Saturday. They take on Wheeling Jesuit down at the McDonough Center starting at 2 o'clock. Always going to be a good crowd down there for that game. Oh, for sure. And I think a great time out there by Coach Cooper. Let's see if they can get something good coming out of that uh, of the timeout. There's a three by Morgan Bruner, and that is great for the Lady Hilltoppers. They were scoreless in the last three and a half minutes before that bucket, back up by four. Yeah, big shot by Bruner, and you can see that she's not phased. 
by that by that shot. Neither is Odachi yeah. as she responds right back. Odachi, a nice jumper there. Answers right back. West Liberty trying to avenge that earlier loss to Notre Dame in the season. 89-84 was the final on that one. Our score here, 85-83. Lady Toppers with the slim two-point lead. Here's Morgan Bruner getting it to Marissa Brown. Poked away again by Davidson. And here comes Notre Dame in transition, slowing it down as Carolick. Yeah, and I think Davidson got away with one right there. You know, she kind of slapped at the ball and came through Brown to do it. But a no call and a play on. Good block there by Marissa Brown. Got that one on Marone. Here come the Lady Hilltoppers in transition. Tingle kept the pivot, foot down. Bruner looking inside to Brown. Battle between her and Adachi. They're going to call a jump ball. Possession arrow will be in favor of Notre Dame College. Things are getting tight. Every yes, pass, every pass is is. Uh, Contested every shot. It's important to get the defensive rebound here at this end and not let Notre Dame get an extra possession. Yep, Notre Dame can tie the game right here. And they don't. Good defense there by the Lady Hilltoppers and Tingle. Break it up. Bruder for three. Off the left iron. No good. Rebounded by Rambla. And once again, West Liberty will, you know, you know you're going to give up a shot here. Yep. Let's just not foul and, and go and secure the rebound and take it back the other end. Here's Stout driving on Beater. Can't get that one to go. Rebounded by Davidson. Say that one was poked out of bounds by Bruner. Notre Dame will have possession. EJ, the big stat pointing out to me, especially in the second half, the turnovers. Lady Hilltoppers 19, Notre Dame just five. Notre Dame forcing West Liberty into some mistakes here in the second half. Notre Dame looking for the even equalizer, and there's a foul going to be called on Brandy Beater. Trying to swat that one from behind. Yeah, and generally, you know, no matter what sport you're playing, if you're playing, you know, football or basketball, the team that has more turnovers, you know, is the team that yeah. usually isn't feeling too good at the end of the game. However, West Liberty has shot the ball so well that it's sort of offset that, but they're going to need to take better care of the ball down this uh, last two minutes if they're going to pull away and hold on for a victory. Adachi does tie it up, makes both free throws at the line, 85 apiece under Two and a half minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Going to be a good finish. Lady Hilltoppers need this win. Johnson step back jumper short. Does not fall. Yeah, I'd have liked to have seen Johnson take the ball all the way, all the way to the basket right there and draw the foul. Adachi thought went out of bounds. Gets the ball to Ramblo, and Ramblo is going to be fouled. It'll be the fifth foul on West Liberty. Second on Audrey Tingle, so Ramlow will be at the line shooting free throws, and Notre Dame can take the lead. Notre Dame hasn't led. Notre Dame has led for eight seconds in this game. The last time they led was with six minutes left in the first quarter. And well, they are leading now. Now give them credit because they've hung around and I like, I like the thing Adachi did there. She drove it all the way to the basket, put a little pressure on the officials to make a call. Yeah. West Liberty needs to do the same right here. No more jumpers. Take the ball to the basket. 20 on the shot clock for the Lady Hilltoppers. Here's Tingle driving like EJ wanted. No good. But they do draw the foul, just like Adachi did on the other end. Audrey will go to the line with a chance to tie it up. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, you want to you want to drive it to the basket. Don't force it. If it's not there, then you kick out for a wide open jumper, but don't settle for the jump shot at this time of the game. Tingle's first attempt, no good. Audrey was perfect three for three at the line before that one. Second free throw is up and no good as well. 0 for 2 on that trip for Audrey. Notre Dame remains up by 2. Buck 35 left in the fourth quarter. 
Lady Hilltoppers need this win. Here's Ramlow driving, no good. Rebounded by Marissa Brown. The, her biggest rebound of the night, her 18th rebound of the night. Well, what a luxury to have her down there to not only defend the drive without fouling, but then pull down the big board. Here's Tingle, working on Adachi. It's at the Johnson. She drives, no good, but she will go to the line, shoot two. That foul is going to go against Aridi. That'll be her fourth. See if Coach Macer takes her out. She has definitely been the best at guarding Marissa Brown out of Notre Dame's post players today. Johnson's first free throw well short. But West Liberty responding with winning basketball plays, you know, driving to the basket, getting fouls. Now they're just going to make their foul shots. Yes. 0 for 4 in the last four attempts at the line for the Lady Hilltoppers. Tingle missing two, Taylor missing two. One minute left. There's Karolik getting it to Stout. Down to 10 on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Adachi in no hurry. Drives. And she will be fouled by Audrey Tingle. It'll be Audrey's third. Two shots coming up for Adachi. And Adachi's really like a coach on the court. I mean, she did exactly. That's what you want to do. Yep. Take it to the basket. And she steps up and makes her first free throw here. Uh, Making it tough on West Lib. Three-point lead right now. It stays a one-possession game with that missed free throw. West Liberty will call a timeout. Down by three. EJ, what do you draw up here if you're Coach Cooper? I'm, I'm not forcing up a three-point shot. I'm, there's 38 seconds left, a lot of time. I want to drive the ball to the basket. If I can't get Brown a touch inside, we'll, we'll live off of her. If she doesn't have something good, she can always kick it out for a three. Right. But you got you got everything open here, and you don't have to force anything too quickly. But I would try to drive the ball to the hoop. Well, Lady Hilltoppers down by three. Notre Dame, thanks to a 7-0 Notre Dame run. West Liberty hasn't scored in three minutes and 45 seconds. Five on the court for West Liberty, Morgan Bruner, Taylor Johnson, Brandy Beater, Audrey Tingle, and Marissa Brown. Brandy Beater will throw it in. Notre Dame up by three. They were down 16 at half. Here's Morgan Bruner working on Adachi. Johnson finds Bruner. Down one to Marissa Brown. Brown working on a Reedy, backing her down. Shot no good. Rebounded by Audrey Tingle. Her shot is good. What a play there by Audrey Tingle. Notre Dame will call a timeout. 22 and a half seconds left. And a one point game 88 87. How about that? Johnny on the spot, <laughs> smallest player on the court, gets the offensive board, shows the poise to show a shot fake. Gets the easy deuce. Now West Liberty down by one. A lot of time left. I mean, I would I would not necessarily foul right away. I would play hard defense, try to come up with a turnover, and then foul after maybe one or two passes in the backcourt right. here. Or they're going to take it out here at half court. After after a pass or two, then go for the ball and go for the foul. Yeah, smart time out there by Coach Lauren Macer for Notre Dame. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, but yeah, you mentioned it. Big play by Audrey Tingle. She stuffed the stat sheet tonight. 12 points, six rebounds, eight assists. They won it all for the Hilltoppers. The Lady, Hill, the Lady Falcons do get it into Adachi, the girl they want with the ball. Audrey Tingle fouls her immediately. 21.9 remaining. The Lady Hilltoppers see if they can get Adachi to miss a, couple, or miss a free throw or a couple here. First one is good. Adachi, five of seven now from the line, and this is a big free throw here. 89-87. And it's good. 
keeps it a three, makes it a three-point game again, but remains a one possession. 90-87 the lead for Notre Dame. And that's why you, you try to hold back a timeout or two because in women's basketball, you're able to advance the ball. Saves you time, saves you a chance of turning it over in the backcourt. Right now, 22 seconds left. West Liberty still has all their options. I would still not necessarily force a three. Maybe go inside to Brown, drive it to the hoop, or kick it out. And also, with how good Marissa Brown is, you always have the possibility of getting that and one opportunity with her down there as well. So another chance to tie the game immediately as well. We've seen that before in the past with these Lady Hilltoppers needing three and Marissa Brown getting the bucket and a foul. Let's see what the Lady Hilltoppers will do here. Okoski will throw it in. Looking for Tingle, does get it to her, guarded by Ramlow. 20 seconds and counting here left in the fourth quarter. Johnson drives, gets it to go. Tough basket there for Taylor. Notre Dame calls a timeout. Both teams now with one remaining in a one-point game. So, I, like, I like the way West Liberty executed right there. You know, quick, quick hitting play right to Johnson, drives it to the hoop, scores it. There's still a lot of time left, still 14.4 uh, seconds. West Liberty will have to go for the steal or the foul right away. So, EJ, we're talking a lot of strategy, and this reminds me of the situation West Liberty men, when they played Concord in overtime, the Concord had a chance to throw the ball in late, and the, uh, the Hilltoppers put two guys refusing to let Tommy Bolte get the ball. If you're Lady Hilltoppers, would you do that to Adachi right now? Boy, I certainly would consider that, and you can see Coach going, Cooper yeah. just made the adjustment Try to keep it out of her hands. And Adachi will draw a foul, though, trying to break free from the double team of Brandy Beater and Grace Foder. It's exactly what the Lady Hilltoppers tried to do. Well, and, and you can see right now the officials will discuss whether that will be an intentional foul or not because it was off the ball. Let's see what they decide. They will not call it an intentional foul, which I think was the correct call. Adachi will get two shots over. you got to give her credit, you know? That, was, that wasn't any great play, and you can see she misses the first <laughs> one. That was not any great play that Notre Dame drew up. That was just her beating the defender yeah. one on two to get the basketball. And uh, she's a good player, and give her credit. Yep, Adachi missing the first, keeps it a one-point game. Does hit the second, her 25th point in the game. Two-point game, 91-89. Lady Hilltoppers will take their final timeout of the game. Down by two, 14.4 seconds left. And EJ, I'll ask you again. Now what are you drawing up? you got to be throwing it down to Marissa Brown, right? Chance to tie the game, go to your best player? You know, you've got all your options there right now. I would drop it down to Marissa. She doesn't have to force up a shot. If she gets double teamed, which could happen, she can kick it out for a three-pointer to right. win the game. But isn't this fun? This is like the NBA. This is fun. You know, they, they call timeouts. They advance the ball into the into the uh, front court. Seems like this has been going on for a while now. <laughs> Again, the Lady Hilltoppers had a huge 16-point lead at half. Notre Dame stormed back here in the second half and have had the lead now for some time. As West Liberty just went cold from the field. West Liberty shot 66.7% in the opening half. Down to 54% now for the game. Well, the team's breaking out of the huddle. 14 seconds remaining. Lady Hilltopper possession down by two. Aridi in the game for Notre Dame, guarding Marissa Brown with four fouls. The Lady Hilltoppers get it into Audrey Tinker. Ten seconds left in the game on a rolling clock. Okoski gets it to Tingle. Five seconds remaining in the game. Tingle drives, doesn't get it to go, but is fouled. So Audrey will head to the line with 2.4 seconds left, needing a pair of free throws to tie the game at 91. Aridi has fouled out. 
So that could become big if Audrey can knock down these free throws. And we would happen to go to overtime. And Aridi did a great job guarding Brown. Did not let the ball go into her uh, on, the, on the possession. But I actually think West Liberty missed Brown going yeah. directly from the out of bounds right to Mike, right to Marissa with 14 seconds. Thought they missed that or, or passed on that. Uh, but give, uh, you know, give West Liberty credit. They drove it to the hoop, and, and here we are. This is a, this is a pressure. Uh, <laughs> this is a big free throw. This here. is a big free throw. You said it. Audrey knocked down the first one. The second one is good. Audrey knocks them down both. Notre Dame will call their final timeout with 2.4 seconds left. We're all tied up at 91, and EJ, I don't know if you watched the game last night, the WU Mountaineers went to three overtimes. Not saying we're headed there, but we could be heading to at least one overtime if Notre Dame can't get a bucket here in the final 2.4. Well, West Liberty certainly hopes so because as it stands, Notre Dame will get the ball in the front yeah. court, and they likely will get a shot here. West Liberty just needs to, uh, you know, Con contest that shot, defend it, and not let any weak side rebound take place. And we will go to extra time. Right. And EJ, I know uh, you don't get to call a lot of men's games. Again, I'm filling in for Todd Allen, who is sick and out for this one. But EJ stepping up. We appreciate you coming in with a women's game. You've done two in two weeks now. And I'd say you've probably had a lot of fun with these games. I really have. You know, I've See been some impressed. good ones. Yeah, I've been impressed with the quality of play. Let's hope West Liberty can play some good defense here without fouling and uh, go into overtime. Yep, you know they're going to try to get this ball probably into Adachi. Double teamed right now by Johnson and Bruner. Saint Adachi, 25 points. She had 28 in the game at Notre Dame earlier this season. A thorn in the Hilltopper side. They do get it into Adachi. One second. She puts up the Hail Mary. No good. We are going to overtime here at the ASRC between the Lady Hilltoppers and the Lady Falcons. Audrey Tingle knocking down two clutch free throws in the dying seconds. We'll take a quick break and be right back with overtime here on the West Liberty Sports Network. The, the issue, the issue. Visit Wheeling, West Virginia. The Mountain East Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament is coming to Wheeling March 6th through the 10th. West Banco Arena will serve as host to one of the nation's premier basketball leagues featuring the highest scoring conference in America. Action begins on March 6th at West Banco Arena and concludes on Sunday, March 10th when two champions will be crowned. Log on to mountaineast.org for more information. and to see Back here just in time for overtime. Audrey Tingle playing with four fouls but coming off of two huge free throws for the Lady Hilltoppers. To tie the game up at 91, that's where we're at right now. Marissa Brown working inside, can't get that one to go. Defended nicely that time by Davidson. And here's Adachi. Adachi, a game high, 25 points for Notre Dame. Stout gets it into Ramlo. Good defense there by Taylor Johnson. And you have a feeling this is how this overtime might go. Defensive battle. Neither, neither team going to want to make a mistake here. Down, back down, one to Marissa Brown. Her shot doesn't fall, but she is fouled by Davidson. It'll be Davidson second. And as we mentioned, EJ Aridi fouled out. She probably played Marissa Brown better than any other player from, Marissa, uh, from Notre Dame has this evening. She really did. She gave uh, Marissa uh, a, a very competitive play inside. But again, you know, they... They bring in number 44 here, uh, Davidson, and she's the same makeup. And yeah. so she's not making it easy on Brown either. It's going to be tough. Brown goes two for two from the line. Lady Hilltoppers at one point in that uh, fourth quarter missed four free throws down the stretch. But all of a sudden, they have made four free throws in a row, four big ones, and they retake the lead, 93-91.
There's a shot up by Marone, no good. Marissa Brown grabs the rebound. Give Marissa 19 rebounds. One rebound away from a 20-20 night for Marissa Brown. Audrey Tingle now, again playing with four fouls. But Audrey with 14 points in the game. Marissa Brown again working on Davidson. Gonna be fouled, no shot. Coach Cooper can't believe it. Be Davidson's third. Marissa Brown will go back to the line. I like what Brown did there. She changed it up. Instead of going to the to the left-handed hook, she kind of stepped through the defender, drew the foul. And I think she needs to do more of that in this overtime period. Marissa Brown, another free throw is good. Again, if you're just joining us, we've been tracking teams around the region. Concord was upset. The Lady Hilltoppers have a chance to jump right back in to the top eight that they were at number nine today when the poll came out. Concord was at eight. The Lady Hilltoppers knocking right back on the door to get back into the Atlantic Regional, but need a win here tonight. Up 95-91. That shot no good by Carolick. And Audrey Tingle grabs the rebound. Lady Hilltoppers seem to be back in control. Well, real good defense by West Liberty. Make Notre Dame take jumpers. Don't let them get to the basket. Beater drives to the rim. Station contact, no call. And away comes Notre Dame. Here is Marone. Good defense there by Audrey Tingle. Again, playing with four fouls. Breaks through the press there. Is foul believed by Marone. If so, that's her first. No, that's going to go against Karolik, and that's her fifth. She's out. Karolik with 11 points. He's been very good tonight for Notre Dame. And uh, I'm not sure if they got the right girl in that foul or not. Uh, but either way, Karolik is out. Yeah, it's a tough loss for Notre Dame. But how about Brown on the rebounding? Yeah. She, she's like a vacuum down there. You know, the ball goes up, and she just she grabs them all. 21 rebounds now for Marissa Brown to go along with her game-high 28 points. Audrey Tingle up to 15 points, and she knocks down another free throw. Audrey's had some big moments this season in the clutch for the Lady Hilltoppers. Hit a three, basically at the buzzer to beat Fairmont in Fairmont. Hit two free throws down the stretch to put them tied and even tonight. Yeah, and those were big ones with West Liberty, you know, holding on to regional playoff life. Yeah. Big shots by uh, Tingle. There's a drive by Adachi. She can't get that to go, but is fouled. Let's see who they give this to, Marissa Brown or Morgan Bruner. We'll give it to Brown. It'll be her third. Marissa Brown has played 41 minutes tonight in county. First one from Adachi is good. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that one right there, but sometimes when you're a player of Adachi status, you get the benefit of the yeah. doubt on a drive, and I think that's what happened right there. One of two at the line. Morgan Bruner for three. She gets it to go. Morgan Bruner. A huge three-point shot. Lady Hilltoppers go up by seven. Adachi trying to answer. Can't get that one to roll home. Marissa Brown fighting for the rebound. Comes up with it and gets fouled. Going to call the foul that time on Asia McIntyre. Marissa Brown will go back to the line and shoot two. What a sequence there, EJ, for the Lady Hilltoppers. Marissa Brown at the line, maybe looking for a knockout punch if she can get them both. Yeah, they're starting to string together nice defensive stands, and they seem to all they seem to all end up in Brown's arms with the defensive board, and that's what you want. Make Notre Dame shoot the perimeter shot and then go grab the board. One of two at the line for Marissa Brown. She's up to 29 points, 22 rebounds. Hilltoppers are up to an eight-point lead. They've hit the century mark here. Hit 99 on Saturday, 100 here. Here's Davidson, a little jumper. No good on that one. I'm going to say that one was last off of Stout and out of bounds. Lady Hilltopper possession. Beater down there fighting for that rebound as well. Notre Dame going to show some press. They get it to Taylor Johnson. Morgan Bruner will get it across half court. Lady Hilltoppers need to be in no hurry right here. Yeah, they'll try to take the air out of the ball, force Notre Dame to foul late in the possession. 
Here's Taylor Johnson driving into the basket. Tries to find Beater. Does. Went through the hands of Stout. Tingle down low to Brown. Five on the shot clock. Brown gets it to go. Another basket for her. Lady Hilltoppers back up by 10. You can't draw it up any better than that. Use the full 30. Dump it into Brown. Get the deuce. EJ, do you think part of this run here in overtime is West Liberty wearing down Notre Dame here through the stretch? You know, I think that probably has something to do with it, but I think more than that, it helps when you have a rebounder that, <laughs> that is pushing 25 rebounds for the game and seems to have a lot of energy left. Marissa Brown just grabbed her 23rd rebound of the night, two away from tying a career high. Not sure if she'll get there or not. But Taylor Johnson was fouled trying to get the ball across half court. She'll go to the line for two. Taylor Johnson, 23 points. Three for six at the line here tonight. First one is good. Johnson's second free throw rolls around and good. It's Morgan Bruner and Taylor Johnson will check out for Johnny Okoski and Ali Farina. And EJ, right now, the four seniors on this Hilltopper team in the game in their final minute of an a uh, in a game here at the ASRC, playing their final game here right now. Yeah, and a really classy move by Coach Cooper to make that happen. Of, co of course, rebounders like Brown and players like Bruner made it happen by extending this lead. Yep. Marissa Brown gets it to Farina for three. It's good. Ali Farina knocks down what might be her first ever career three-point shot. Have to look that up. Off the bench, the senior. And EJ, that's uh you can't you can't make that stuff up happening here uh, for the senior. That's really good stuff. And at every commercial, I hear the Main Street Bank commercial. <laughs> Are the banks still open here at West Liberty? It's uh 7.30 at night? That no, I don't a, think so. That was a nice bank shot. Right now, the seniors getting an ovation from their players right in front of us, EJ. Marissa Brown, Brandy Beater, Johnny Okoski, Ali Farina will all check out for the final time here at the ASRC. Still a lot of basketball left to be played for those seniors, but this will be the final time they play here at the ASRC. Well, and really, uh, like I said, a classy move. Great to see the seniors get their accolades. But what a basketball game. This has yeah. had quite an ebb and flow. West Liberty jumping out to a 15-point halftime lead. Notre Dame cutting it. And now West Liberty up 15 in overtime. Rambo's three way off. And EJ, that was Ali Farina's first career three-point shot. So congratulations to Ali and her final home game of her Hilltopper career, she hits her first career three-point shot. So congratulations to her. And that's a cool moment there. Lady Hilltopper's up by 15 now. Kelsey Hulett into the game. Jackie Kitts, Olivia Belknap, and Grace Foder were the four in for West Liberty. As Audrey Tingle checked out with the seniors as well. Allie, Allie will, or excuse me, uh, Allie Frieda will stay in. And she'll get some minutes here in her final game. Here's Belknap working the point with Ramlow. Shot clock down to 10. Hilltoppers can't run it out on this possession. What a season it has been for the Lady Hilltoppers. They will move to 19 and 8 overall, 16 and 5 in the conference. They'll move up to third place with Concord getting upset tonight. They'll move up more than likely in the region with Edinburgh and Concord both falling in the region tonight. A perfect night that almost was not perfect. It took two last-second free throws from Audrey Tingle to tie this one up, but she made them, and the Lady Hilltoppers made it count in overtime. 107-92, to 92, call, Notre Dame only scoring one point in overtime as the Lady Hilltoppers outscored them 16-1 to 1 in the final frame to win this game. Yeah, and it's great to see all the smiles on the court, you yeah. know, that when... When Allie made that bank shot three-pointer there, <laughs> and uh, you could see the how much the team likes one another, and then at the end of the game, you could see all the smiles, and the game's supposed to be fun. Absolutely. And West Liberty certainly had fun tonight at the end of the game, and in a very important game for them with the regional ranking on the line.
Absolutely. They will certainly improve their chances of being on in that uh, regional com a couple weeks tournament coming up next week. Lady Hilltoppers will finish their season sa regular season Saturday against Wheeling Jesuit. Uh, EJ, just a terrific game here today by Lady Hilltoppers. Marissa Brown finished with a game high, 31 points, 24 rebounds for her. Taylor Johnson pitched in 25 as well. As the Lady Hilltoppers get a huge Mountain East Conference victory in their final home game of the 2018-2019 season. Coming up next, the men may be playing in their final home game of the 2018-19 season. Maybe not, still to be determined. That's coming up next on the Mountain East Con or on the West Liberty Sports Network. and today I'm going to show you what it's like to be in this major. Let's go check out my ecology class with Dr. Lofman. Today we're studying host race speciation and the model organism for that is an apple maggot fly. So if you see each one of these circles represents the population of apple maggot fly. Let's check out our snake room in one of our animal care labs. So this snake is gravid and she's gonna lay eggs. So if you look at the back end, see how swollen she is? Uh, those are all the eggs that she's gonna hopefully lay in this lay box that we've put in there. Now we're in our gecko lab and we're gonna check out Aurora. Aurora is one of our giant geckos, and we got her as a hatchling when the program started in 2015, and she's grown up here, and the students have taken care of her and raised her. Aurora is from New Caledonia, which is an island off the coast of Australia, and that's the only place on planet Earth that these geckos are found. We have four species of geckos in this lab, and we recently had a crested gecko egg hatch. loved animals and I knew for a long time that I wanted to work with them. I didn't really know in what setting and when I learned about West Liberty University Zoo Science program I thought that would be awesome to get involved in so I came here and I've loved it. Here at West Liberty I'm from Berkeley County West Virginia and today I'm going to show you what it's like to be in this major. Check out my ecology class with Dr. Lofman. Today we're studying host race speciation, and the model organism for that is an apple maggot fly. So if you see, each one of these circles represents the population of apple maggot fly. Let's check out our snake room in one of our animal care labs. So this snake is gravid and she's going to lay eggs. So if you look at the back end, see how swollen she is? Uh, those are all the eggs that she's going to hopefully lay in this lay box that we've put in there. Now we're in our gecko lab and we're going to check out Aurora. So Aurora is one of our giant geckos. And we got her as a hatchling when the program started in 2015. And she's grown up here, and the students have taken care of her and raised her. Aurora is from New Caledonia, which is an island off the coast of Australia. And that's the only place on planet Earth that these geckos are found. We have four species of geckos in this lab, and we recently had a crested gecko egg hatch. loved animals and I knew for a long time that I wanted to work with them. I didn't really know in what setting and when I learned about West Liberty University Zoo Science program 
I thought that would be awesome to get involved in, so I came here and I've loved it. The program involves classes that are centered around animal care as well as conservation and ecology. And in addition to our classes, we also have animals here on campus where we can get involved and learn how to take care of them with hands-on experience. So right now I'm making the diet for the sloth. She eats yams and lettuce and a couple other things, but she's just like picky. set up over here, so let's go check it out. program here at West Liberty University now has two tracks. You can either go into the applied conservation track or the zoo science track, but for your first year you get a little bit of experience in both. That way you can decide which direction you want to go. Once we reach a certain number of hours with animal care here at West Liberty University, we move on to taking care of some of the animals at the Ogilvy Good Zoo. We have internships there that earn us credit um, with West Liberty. And then some of us have also gotten jobs there. I personally have gotten a part-time job there um, after my sophomore year, and I worked there for about a year now as an animal keeper. My job is to clean all the exhibits and check on the animals, make sure they're all healthy, feed them, give them fresh water, um, and then also provide them with enrichment so that they are physically or mentally stimulated every day. These are mirror cats. And this is our baby, Rafiki. He's just a little over two years old. <laughs> this is Kenny. He's one of our ring-tailed lemurs. He's about 24 years old, so he's a little old man. These are our mongoose lemurs. They are also from Madagascar, and they are an endangered species. 